This video is brought to you by Cyberfighter, available on Amazon and Audible. Hey everybody, how's it? You know, we're gonna do a little change up here and instead of doing visual effects, I'm gonna do a little bit of directing 101. As an actor and writer who actually also directs my own projects, I get a lot of questions as to what do you need to know to be an effective film director. So I'm gonna share with you some of the processes throughout this series. What we're going to do today is we're going to go over how you first convert your screenplay into a shooting script and then how you build a shot list out of that. In future episodes, we'll talk about storyboarding and how to pre-visualize before you get on set because that's the most neglected part of the production cycle, I think, is pre-production. You want to fix it in prep because once you get in front of the cameras and you're on set and you have a crew and you got a lot of actors, things cost a lot more money. So, enough talk, let's get right to it. All right, so here we are in Movie Magic Screenwriter. This is the software I use. A lot of you may use Final Draft. That's considered the industry standard. But uh, Movie Magic is also used by a lot of professionals as well. Uh, my version is uh, from the year 2000, so it's relatively old now. They've, they're up to version 6 now, but uh, because this actually works with Windows 10, I don't feel a need to upgrade. any rate, um, you'll notice the format here. This is a sitcom format, okay? And the stage directions here, they're all in capitals, and the dialogue is double-spaced. So with TV sitcoms, this is generally the format. It's also in spec format. The scenes are not numbered. Okay, so before you break down your script, you're going to want to convert this to a shooting script format, not spec script. Spec script is what you use when you're submitting uh, either to an agent or to a reader, to a studio. Uh, you, you've written a screenplay and you want them to read it and maybe buy your script or make your movie. You would do it in spec format. You don't number it. You don't put any shots. You don't put any camera directions, anything that, you know, you let the studio decide whether or not to do that they will convert it to a shooting script. But if you're an indie filmmaker, you're probably gonna write your own material and you're gonna shoot it yourself. So you're gonna need to know how to convert this. But just for fun, what I wanna do is I wanna show you uh, what a film format would look like. Format. I wanna load a script. Okay, you wanna load a screenplay. Okay, so if you're writing a screenplay, you don't need to use this. Yes. Okay. Okay, there we go. So if you're writing a screenplay, like a film, it's going to look like this. Okay? And you'll notice everything's in lowercase now because when I wrote in caps, I didn't worry about capitalizing because everything was capitalized. But it, re it retains the format, it just changes it. But if you're writing a movie, it would look like this. Alright? So, just for fun, and for this example, we're going to pretend that this is a screenplay, a film. So what we need to do is convert this to a shooting script format. How many pages is this right now? This is three pages. It's gonna still be three pages because it's like, you know, two and a half pages. Okay, two and a half pages. And so let's do this. We're going to format that. So we're gonna not load the script format. We're gonna edit the format, okay? So right now it's in spec format as I mentioned before. What, what we need to do now is we need to number the scenes. So, we go into scene headings, okay, and you'll notice the scene headings, that's the slug line, which is always in caps. It starts with interior or exterior, int or ext, and then it usually shows day or night, and it has the location. So what you want is you want to have scene numbers, definitely on the left, and you also want them on the right, because it's just so much easier for your script supervisor or whoever's handling continuity to be able to just easily see those scene numbers. Also, this helps with breaking down your script. You want to put continued at the top and bottom of the pages. All right, This will kind of like clue off how many uh, pages a particular scene is. Scenes, when it and the, the reason why I changed this to a movie format and not keeping it on the television format was in film, uh, and I'm not sure about TV, I would think TV is as well, but TV times out differently, right? Sitcoms are usually half hour. 
Films are usually like feature or short, whatever. But in film, uh, each page is divided up into eighths, eighths of a page. And that's going to be very important when you are breaking down your script. So let's load these. Boom. So that's the minimum that you need. Notice now we've got numbers on the slug lines. Scene one, scene two, scene three, and four. There we go. All right. Now, as far as transitions go, you don't need to put cut to, but I usually put dissolve. If it's something that I am writing that I'm going to shoot myself, I will put certain transitions in. Not if it's a cut, because I mean a cut, you're going to cut shots, right? But if you're going to have a dissolve between scenes or a wipe or some kind of fade to black and fade up, it's helpful to do that because you get a more accurate page count that way when it comes to shooting scripts, all right? Now, if you are shooting your own film and you want to put in camera directions, you can because you're going to be shooting it yourself and this will help you in timing. Uh, with me, I worry about my shot list and storyboards. I don't put camera directions in the script because with the actors, it's easier to just know the basic action and dialogue. And when you're blocking it out in rehearsal, it's going to end up being different anyway and you don't need to update it. Just as long as the dialogue and timing time out right. All right? So, whether you're using Movie Magic or Final Draft or whatever you're doing, uh, that is a screenplay format, right? You don't want to just do Microsoft Word unless you know how to set up the margins perfectly. If you know how to do that, then yeah, you already probably know how to do this too. So, um, But if you don't, I, I recommend using screenplay software. It makes everything so much easier. We need to, in order to take this to synchronize, we need to turn this into a PDF. And there are two ways to do a PDF. A lot of times you're able to generate a PDF using like, if you're on a Windows machine, using Microsoft PDF, which you do not want to do. You want to use whatever functionality the screenplay software has to create a PDF. Okay, so here we are. Uh, I just Googled Synchronize. That's their website. And if you don't already have a profile with them, you're going to want to sign up. So you're going to select that and fill this information out, give them your name, email, and your project name, and it'll give you a profile. And after you do that, you'll be able to log in. And the login looks basically like this. So once you have signed up for the Entertainment Partners Synchronize, you'll Put in your email and password and then you'll log in which brings you to your profile. Now I've been using Synchronize for quite some time now. Uh, Entertainment Partners bought it up a few years ago but as far as a free tool for you to do your pre-production and script breakdowns and scheduling on it's fantastic. It doesn't give me any kind of like limitations on how many pages or how big my script is. I can do feature breakdowns, I can do short breakdowns and I'm going to show you how to do that using uh, the latest episode of That Darn Girlfriend, which I showed you how to craft that into a shooting script first. So we are going to bring that in here, break it down, and create a schedule. So to do that, we're going to have to create a new project. So this is what they call it, Create New Scheduling. You're going to click there, and you're going to name it, and I'm going to call it That Darn Girlfriend. episode well I'm just gonna call it tricks and treats keep it short click the I agree and it's hit OK there you go it loads it up and then it's gonna ask for the script because you have not uploaded a script yet so we're going to find that script and we're going to get it it's down here on the desktop there it is remember we made it as a PDF and specifically a PDF that was generated from the screenplay software which means Synchronize will be able to read it. Select the date. Today is the 10th of November as I record this. Um, if you're familiar with script revisions uh, you always start with white but then as you make script revisions it's going to change colors. That's how they color code them so you know which pages have been changed, which scenes have been changed, any kind of changes once you've locked the script. Uh, which I had not locked the script for this demo because 
Right now we're doing a preliminary schedule, so we don't need to worry about that yet until you're actually in production. Then you're going to want to lock the script so that if you change the script, it's going to reflect these changes. So for now, I'm just going to call it white, which is your first revision. Now, it's great. It's smart. It's predicting that the script actually starts on the second page because it reads all the formatting. First page is the title page. It's saying, where's the first script, uh, first page of the script? You want to do page two, generally, unless you do not have a title page, but I always do it that way. And would you like voiceover and off-screen characters automatically added to the breakdown? I always put yes because it's easier to take them out of the breakdown than it is to forget about them. So, especially when you're dealing with uh, scheduling, you're going to want to have all of your actors listed, all of the characters listed. And that was really quick because there's only four pages. So, we go to the quick reference, which now brings us right here. Here's our different, here's our menu with the different functions we can do. The next step, now that we've imported the script, is before we start making a schedule or anything, you have to break it down. So let's go to breakdown. All right. So the breakdown, here on the left is your screenplay, your script, and notice the scene numbers are there. And there's the continues. <clears throat> that helps it know exactly how long each scene is, how many pages. And as you can see here, the pages are broken down into eighths of a page. This is uh, why screenplays are formatted the way they are, is so that they can be timed, and each page is, uh, each section's one eighth. So if you have a full page, it goes from top to bottom till the next scene, that's one page. If you have a half, it's four out of eight, you know. So you wanna shoot it as base, you just, I let it measure it, <clears throat> instead of me changing it I let it measure because it's pretty good estimate if you formatted your script correctly synchronize does a really good job of estimating the breakdown okay here's your day night so generally it reads your slug line which is these lines here in gray and it knows night day you know morning needed however you format it it pretty much picks that up correctly Next to the measurement, you have story day. If you're shooting a feature and it takes place over multiple days or weeks in the story, sometimes what you want to do is you want to indicate what day in the story it is. Um, that way, when you're shifting around the scenes for continuity purposes and, you know, uh, when your continuity person's looking at the one-line schedule, they're going to go, okay, we're at this story day. We're at the it helps navigate people, keep them, uh, keep them straight as far as the story goes. For a short, it's not necessary. I always fill it up if I'm doing multiple. Uh, with this example, it's not multiple days, but I'm just going to put it in there just to show you. I put story day one. Every scene in this breakdown is going to have story day one. Next, you have your description, which is going to go on the strip board. This is important to fill out because that way, when you're looking at the schedule in a strip board, and the longer your project is, the more important this is going to be. You can see what each scene is about. So you basically just write in whatever for you as the filmmaker. When you read that, you'll know, ah, that's this scene. So for example, this is where Valerie and Vic uh, first get uh, Charlie Brown knocking at the door. If you've seen that episode, you'll know what I'm talking about. So I'm going to say Valerie and Vic. Well, it's all in caps right now. Hold on. Valerie and Vic, uh, welcome. First, trick or treater. Charlie Brown. Okay. Doesn't matter what you put. It's just that when I'm looking at the breakdown, I'm going like, ah, oh, this is where Charlie Brown shows up. Okay. <laughs> and as we can see in our casting, it automatically picks the characters out by their name and it says we have three characters here but Charlie Brown is a CG character however he is a voiceover because Pamela did the voiceover for Charlie Brown so I'm keeping it in here instead of removing it I'm also going to in in uh, these little lines here these are different sections of the breakdown okay this is where you tag 
the different items in here in the script and you mark them as either extras, if there's any stunts with hair, makeup, costume. So there's two ways to do this. You can either manually put in here or you can go through the script. Sometimes it's easier this way. For example, costume wise. So Valerie's dressed as Dorothy. So I'm going to highlight dressed as Dorothy and that's going to pop up the add element function. That's costume. So we're going to select the costume department. It's Valerie's costume. So I'm going to say it's associated with Valerie. You don't always have to do that. I like to do that because it keeps things n nice and tidy. You want to list it on the call sheet. Yeah, existing elements, there's nothing in there, but create a new element. Boom, there you go. Notice she pops up. There's her costume. Okay. Who else is in this scene? It's Vic. Okay, where's Vic's costume? Ah, here we go. Pirate. So that's the pirate outfit. Costumes. It remembers the last uh, department you were at. So it's, sometimes it's helpful to go through each department and fill that out in the scene and then go on to the next, like props, whatever. It, it doesn't matter how you work. The functionality is there. This one is going to be associated with Vic. I create a new element there. There's Vic's costume, all right? Uh, oh, here's a prop. So basket. All right, that's not a costume. That's property. And it's Valerie, so I'll put it Valerie. Create a new element. Sometimes with props, you don't necessarily have an association with a particular character. It's going to be a, char a prop that both characters are going to use. They're going to hand it off to each other, so sometimes you don't have to associate every single item with the character. That's just in the case of, you know, needing to organize things better. All right. Uh, so here we go. Okay. Here's another prop. This is not associated with anybody. The rock. Okay, that's a prop. There's no associated character, so you just create that element. Boom. See, notice it doesn't have any character with it. You're going to go through each scene and, and the scene is from scene number to scene number slug line to slug line everything between here is this one scene so whatever's in here so there's Donnie okay so he he is a prop he's you know he's Valerie and Vix I don't associate him with either of us it's Donnie in her basket clicks her red heels here we go the red heels that's part of her costume so we go back to costumes that's also Valerie. So in that case, you, you see what I'm doing here. I'm filling all this stuff in. All right. That's one way to do it. You go through each scene and you highlight everything and you tag it according to what department it falls within. Another way to do things, and this is a great example, is you do it here. You add manually, not out of the script. Because there's something very important in that darn girlfriend that's not listed in the script. And that is see if you can guess it's associated with Vic and it relates to hair and it's called Vic's wig <laughs> every episode Vic has to wear a wig because the actor doesn't have hair like that so boom as you can see is Vic's wig all right there's also if there was a specific hairstyle for example with Valerie she had her Dorothy braids and ribbons so if you had a hairstylist working on the set, they might want to know that and know, ah, Valerie's going to have to have this hairstyle. All right. We do everything ourselves. So we did not fill out a breakdown sheet and a schedule for this because it was a one day shoot. I'm just showing you using this existing example instead of something that we're in pre-production on because I don't want to give you any spoilers. All right. So you can see this episode here on our YouTube channel as well. All right, so that's one. Another thing too, Charlie Brown being a CG character, sometimes you're going to want to give... Uh, it's a, Okay, so there's a difference between special effects and visual effects. Special effects are practical effects. If you're having some sort of like wind machine or a rain machine or f explosions, that's special effects, right? Visual effects are anything you do in post. So... A lot of special effects on a big budget movie will be visual effects on a small low budget indie because they're not safe to do on a real set and you have to fake it in post. 
and there's a lot of really great ways to do it in post now so visual effects I mean the access that you have as an independent filmmaker to some spectacular visual effects it's amazing so we're gonna call this Charlie Brown character CGI or he's Daz da sorry D-A-Z studio he's a character from Daz studio and boom that just tells our departments he's gonna be a CG guy so when people like when your first AD is going where's Charlie Brown uh, has he appeared on the set yet you as the director can go he's a CG character we're putting him in post so we don't need to worry about him okay so you've gone through and you've done every that all that for each scene uh, you can also like give yourself personal notes here you know make sure like for example make sure to get clean out the door to put CGI character in that's just a personal note for you there's also production notes which you can have like you know if you have a crew you can give them notes about like you know make sure everybody does whatever what you know notes for each scene okay and each scene is going to have its own breakdown sheet right so you can go to the next one by either going here the next scene right or from here in the left you just click on the next slug line right and you fill this one out okay so I'm gonna fill these out real quick we're gonna fast forward this and you can see uh, what a finished thing is gonna look like so here we go okay we finished filling everything in I just went through a quick fast forward thing here and you notice we've we finished everything another thing I want to tell you about is when you are filling in additional scenes let's let's just go to this scene for example scene four uh, so you have the props you want to add props from the other scene right so let's just say basket and Donnie they're gonna be in that scene too so you want to easily you can easily get different elements from other scenes in different departments and you can just check box them and bring them into this this sheet as well which is great because you know it saves you you don't want to type in everything because if you type in it and create a new element all the time and you type the same thing in you're gonna have six baskets or whatever it is and you only need one basket because there are ways that you can get pictures of that particular prop or item and save that in your database so that your production team can look at that and go okay this is this is what the briefcase or what the the basket or the the basket of candy is okay so I've eliminated a lot of stuff here as well like if we go back to uh, the first scene scene one uh, there was also set decoration Halloween decks decorations right and bring those in right and you also want to add that to the other scenes though so not outside but inside they're here and then uh, scene four is also inside Halloween decorations and scene five is outside so you don't need that you don't need it in scene five because that was exterior notice it's exterior you have exterior interior if you got IE that means it starts inside goes outside or it starts from outside comes inside so like if the camera if your cameras like on a gimbal or a dolly or whatever and it's going from outside to inside then you might want to use that just to let your production team know that that's how we're gonna do this uh, particular scene all right within each scene are different shots that's gonna be a shot list which will be the subject of a future tutorial for now we're doing a breakdown to figure out how many days we actually need to shoot this particular project alright so once you filled in all your breakdown sheets you can now look at your strip board okay uh, before we go there let's take a look at the department so this has all of the different departments you can actually uh, in your admin section you can actually 
name people, give their contact information, and assign them to particular departments as you fill those jobs. But this gives you a quick breakdown as to how many elements there are for each each one. Okay, day out of days lost and found. I'll go over that in a sec. Let's go to strip board. All right. So back in the old days, before computers, they used to do this in a cardboard fold-out big thing, and each particular scene would be a strip of color-coded paper that would then slide in, and you could rearrange them manually. That's how they did it for <laughs> the, since the inception of the production uh, workflow in cinema up until we were able to do this on a computer. I've never done it that way. I've always done it in a computer. That was before my time, but at any rate. So, for your first board, and this is going to change as you play around with the schedule, you're going to want to make it easy peasy. I always go sort the strips by scene number, have it scene order. Chronological order according to the strip board. You can actually name it whatever you want. You can also sort it by maybe your grouping locations, set names, interior, exterior, time of day. That I like to arrange them myself, so I always do it this way. Create board. It's going to create a very tiny board right here, okay? It's basically a one-day shoot. Now, if I wanted to make that a longer schedule, and I'll show you how to do that as well, I can easily do that too. So as we can see, in our shoot day, we start scene one is inside, scene two is outside, three and four are both inside, and scene five is outside. If we were to shoot this particular video project in chronological order, we would have to move everything outside, move it back inside, move it, not efficient, all right? And when you're dealing with longer schedules, this beco becomes critical, critical. You do not ever wanna be like, let's shoot this thing in order unless you've got a very good reason why you need to do that, all right? You can also set the schedule. We don't know when we're going to be shooting this yet, so let's leave that blank for now, okay? So, knowing this, there is another trick that we can do, and it doesn't necessarily apply to this particular project. I'm only showing you this as an illustration, okay? We go back into our breakdown, and what we're going to want to do is what they call merge. Uh, you want to merge these breakdown sheets, okay? See, merge. So I want to group everything that's on the inside together and everything that's on the outside together. Okay, so let's do that. So we're going to merge. Scenes that are merged share their breakdown elements with each other and they're treat treated as a single strip within the schedule. So what you could have done if you knew that, okay, I'm going to keep all the interiors together, I would have only had to fill out the breakdown elements from the first scene, and it would copy to all the other ones. So right now, notice how with interior, exterior, it, it swaps. All the ones that are gray are all interiors. So that makes it really easy. These are all going to be grouped together. Oh, wait, not that one. I'm sorry. Yeah, so it doesn't group the color coding. It's just scene by scene it alternates from gray to white gray to white gray to white right so these all need to be together so I'm gonna go okay boom so now it brings in everybody on this breakdown sheet even though they're not all in the same scene right but that's fine because when I go back to the strip board right let's go to my outdoor scenes I want to merge those too so those are going to be merged. So now I basically, when you go back to the strip board, you're going to see two. Hold on. Uh -huh. Unscheduled five. Okay, here we go. All right. They disappeared because they weren't scheduled yet. All right. So now this is what we call the boneyard unscheduled and then there's the boneyard like when you delete stuff and throw it away it goes into the boneyard you can always bring it back but right now we want to schedule this so it's a night shoot but to be efficient you want to shoot inside before it gets dark outside because you you know inside you can block off the windows you can light it so that it looks like it's night and doesn't have to be the daytime um, necessarily 
So you want to shoot interiors first, so that way when you move outside, it's dark. So we'll put those in first, and then these next. And there you have your shoot day, right? Valerie and Vic's apartment, Valerie and Vic did a trick-or-treater, Lucy comes to the door, Johnny Appleseed, the third one. Okay, and then we have the background plates, and then the outside thing where Johnny is sharing, like, what'd you get? What kind of candy did you get? And Charlie Brown goes, I got a rock. All right, so that's one shoot day. End of day one shoot. So let's say, and we actually shot this, I believe we shot this in October uh, 8th. Or no, we shot this October 7th, I think. As shoot day one with calendar, eh, five day week, six day week. You can also, yeah, five day week standard. All right, and then you save it. And that's going to apply. There's the day that we shot, right? A lot of times, um, I want to also add, like, hey, this is when we're done. If you have multiple days, sort meant. So you want to add a. You want to add a day break. So a lot of times, what you can do is you can hit that plus, and you hit a, a banner strip. And the banner text is going to say end of shoot. And bring that down to the bottom. There you go. One day. All right. Why is it important to have everything in this strip board and you organize it in the strip board? Because then when you publish the schedule, and I'm about to do that, but for now, let's do this first. Let's save it. It's the scene order. And let's go to what we call day out of days. Day out of days tells you how many days we need each element. And it's very important when it comes to cast. And when you're doing your budget, this is where you're going to refer to when you're figuring out how to budget how many days for your actors, right? Everybody starts work and finishes on the same day. That's what SWF stands for. SW says start work, then you have W for work. On a long schedule, you're going to see SW the first time we use the actor, and then WWWW every day that they're shooting, and then their last day is going to be WF, work finish. And that will show you the project start, project finish days. And I'll go back to Cyber Fighter to show you an example of, because that's multiple schedules that I'm working with trying to figure this out, and you can see what that's going to be like. Of, and I'm going to go to the feature, Cyber Fighter feature. Okay, I had actually done a preliminary strip board here. Ah, so now you're looking at a feature project. Now you're looking at multiple scenes, multiple days. Uh, I just put February arbitrarily so that I could, you know, arrange the days and get an idea of what it's going to be like, right? We're doing a five-day week, and we're off weekends. Okay, and everything's organized according to, you can notice, this is why it's really important with the scene summary. That's back on your breakdown, right? Dream sequence, Brian fights Ninja and Chunji has a flashback. So you fill that out, that's shown here. So we all know the description, okay? So then you go back to the day out of days. Let's look at casting. Okay, so here we have the actors. So here we go. Brian, he starts work, works all that week, works that week, keeps working. As you slide through, it gives you all the way up to work finish. This gives you how many days that each actor is scheduled for. So in your budget, you're going to budget this amount of days. This is not including rehearsals. If you are going to be rehearsing your actors and it is a SAG project, you have to budget rehearsal days too. So you add whatever rehearsal days. Not everybody's going to need a rehearsal day. Your walk-ons aren't going to need that, but for your main characters, it's a good idea to rehearse with your actors if you can. So that's just a recommendation. Right now you're just putting together your first schedule. You're trying to estimate. Don't worry about that yet till you start engaging like a first AD or somebody or a unit production manager who actually does this for a living and will go through and fix whatever you need fixed. So I brought 
you this feature schedule here because once you have multiple days you are now able to print out a one-line schedule and you can do this as a PDF all right so let's runs the report click OK it's gonna pop that open and here you have it this is your one-line schedule right so this takes every strip board and it basically prints it out in a way that you can easily share with your entire production department all right gives you a lot of really good information these numbers here these are the numbers of the actors that we need and this is the location and you know as you, you know and I'll show you you can fill in that stuff too but anyway that's your one line you can also create a shooting schedule all right that's going to give you the it defaults the whole thing it's going to give you all the departments options by scene so boom let's see what that looks like so here's a shoot day number one this is what we're covering let me zoom in so shoot day number one we're shooting at this residential apartment location this is all the costumes needed hair props makeup transpo these are the actors these are the scenes on your call sheet all of this information is going to get tossed over to the call sheet right casting right uh, shoot day number one so we're doing we're doing this scene then we're doing that scene and then so we have all the scenes scheduled end of day one so we're shooting all this stuff on the one day this is definitely not organized correctly for a film shoot once you have your you know team together if you're doing a feature you're gonna have a production team you're gonna have a crew you're gonna have a unit production manager you're gonna go over this and you're going to organize it all so that each shoot day works the way it should okay I'm just doing this for illustration you know all these different things that you can print out which can be helpful for you you know this can be definitely helpful for you and in fact you know what I want to do I want to go to the short film cyber fighter all right so this is the short film this is a smaller project okay this has only got 14 scenes okay when I converted this shooting script there's a scene the sky bridge scene is many pages as you can see it's how many pages is that it's two and three-eighths of a page there's a lot of action in that and so on a different breakdown I add more sheets so you've got you can break that into you know scenes into different sections 